So I went to see Henry Moore's exhibition one of the many times, and he says, I add something to make it better, or I take something away to make it better, which I just love. So for me, it's, a, it's, it's an intuitive process. My name is Alan, Alan Hirsch. Uh, I was a psychotherapist for 50 years, but I've also been an artist and a cartoonist. I can remember being six years old and going to uh, the Montreal Museum of Fine Art and playing with a big chunk of clay and sort of making trains. My mother always kind of, you know, got me into art lessons or took me to art galleries. And, and of course she made art, you know, so she had all these books on art, so there was always the idea of art. So when my first son, Jesse, was born, I started making toys for him, you know, little trucks and whatever. And then the, le the leftover pieces of wood, I started making collages. And those collages were the beginning of, the beginning of art and, and using wood. And then one day I had a shoe for him and a friend gave me a thing for a mechanism from a bike and I put it together and I love, I love the clicking sound. And that was the beginning of me doing ensemble, as they say, or found object art. I just collect stuff, you know? when I go to yard sales or I find things and, uh, and I look at something and I look at something and then one day they look good together. And that's excitement. That's excitement. You know, but I have places where I look. You know, that's part of the hunt. That's part of the collect prior to the assemble, you know. So, this is a piece of wood that came from a door that was in our synagogue, a hundred years old. This I picked up at a yard sale. I have no idea what it is. And this I've had for about 15 years, which is a shoe form that carpenters use. And then one day, it kind of looks good together in my mind and it clicks. So this is called a step up, you know. And, and, and I loved, I loved making this. My upcoming show is called Retirement. You know, I've been a therapist for 50 years. I've been in my office here in North Bay since 1978 on a big 1940s oak desk, which I love. So when I closed my office, the desk was too heavy to move. So I took it apart and I moved all the wood into my workshop. And then, all of last summer, I made art from the wood of my desk. So it's kind of honoring my career, but it's also helping me move into recognizing myself as an artist full time. So this piece here was sort of the first one that I made from my desk. See, this is, I love that, the oak. And this is called Under the Eight Ball. I mean, there's a lot of play in my work, right? How I name them, you know, there's a sense of play. What has always interested me is switches, you know, antique switches, things that move, things that turn. It kind of gives you a satisfaction when you either, or when you're able to, to move something. So that also speaks to the illusion of control. Right? You're not really changed, you're not in control of anything, 
but you're changing something inside you. So some pieces, you know, you can't play with because it's, it's like, you know, you start playing with this plane, it'll break, okay? But other pieces, yes, you can play with. And uh, I like art that has an on-off switch, you know? But kids love my exhibitions because they get it. They get the play, you know? So, yes, yeah, some things you'll be able to touch. Some things not so much. I'm gonna have to say, you know, touch, no touch. <laughs> I think I'm, I've been to exhibitions that where I walked into the exhibition and seeing it just gave me energy. I was just excited by it, you know, it feels good. You know, so, I mean, that's what I would hope to do, to have an exhibition and then somebody can feel that energy. They can feel the joy, they can feel the spark that is behind everything that I did. But it's like, you know, when you draw a cartoon, you show the cartoon, you want people to laugh, sort of to get it. Same thing when you tell a joke, okay? So when I do my art, there's kind of a spark that I feel when I make it. And so if somebody can feel that creativity or understand that creativity to some extent, then that's joy for me. It's just sharing a part of me with the rest of the world. But one day I found that I didn't know what I was going to make next. So I started doing something, but I have no idea what it's going to look like. So it's surrendering to an intuitive artistic process. When I do that, I am incredibly peaceful. And when I am doing that, although I'm alone in my workshop, I feel connected to everybody I love. <laughs>